Hello and welcome to this video on how to use the channels report feature in the AIMRAY Studio Analysis software. So right here I have two sessions that are open um, from Silverstone National and we're going to look at the data in the channels report rather than looking at it as we've traditionally done so in the measures graph. To turn on the channels report uh, up here in the uh, navigation menu across the top, there's this button here called Channels Report, and if I click on that, it's going to open up the screen. Now, you can see it's opened up the tab down here as well, and the first thing it's going to show is it always defaults to one uh, particular channel. In this instance, it's loaded up the channel, which is GPS speed, and so you can see that based upon the lap number, what the minimum and maximum speed were for that particular lap. Now you can use the channels report for multiple different variables, but for today's demonstration, we're going to use it for two uh, particular focuses. The first is we're going to look at some driver performance information in the channels report. And the second thing we're going to have a look at is vehicle health. And so um, this is data that's coming in from an Evo 4S. So there's additional inputs that are available in this analysis. If you happen to have any of the uh, advanced AIM setups, you will have uh, some, if not all, of these channels and potentially a lot of different ones. If you're using uh, an AIM Solo 2 where you just have GPS data, um, that data is also available in these devices. So I'll use that just to make sure that it's useful for everybody from a driver point of view. So here we've got GPS speed and I'm actually going to increase uh, and add uh, two variables for driver. The first thing I'm going to add is longitudinal acceleration and if I click on that channel here um, you can actually see that I can add certain pieces of information. So I'm going to add minimum and I'm going to add maximum um, and then um, I'm going to click on GPS latitudinal and I'm going to click on uh, minimum and I'm going to click on maximum there as well and then I'm going to click on OK. You can see that this is now opened up that allows us to be able to see certain pieces of information that are very useful to us if we wanted to be able to analyze uh, driver for performance. Not only do we now have GPS speed, we can see just how um, the driver is using um, some of the car in different laps. And so you can see here that uh, on the GPS longitudinal acceleration, the minuses are braking and the pluses are accelerating. And then on the lateral, um, it gives you an indication of left and right hand G-force um, against the, the, the unit in the car or the car itself. And so what we want to be able to have a look at is here, there's some really interesting information to be able to see uh, based upon how the car's performing. Um, the, the greater this number is in a minor sense, or probably in this instance, the lower the number is, uh, you can see just how much brake force is being used um, in this model. So you can see that on this lap, lap number 10, this was the largest amount of brake force that was used as uh, the car was slowed. Similarly, we can see that in terms of lateral acceleration to be able to see how well is the driver doing in terms of being able to use um, the vehicle itself and being able to uh, identify just how much uh, lateral uh, g-force is, is able to be able to use. And so you can use this to be able to see if there's a progression in terms of what's being done with the car um, by the driver. And this is very useful. Now we can add so many other variables and there'll probably be more video tutorials in the future that focus on in enhanced driver analysis. But this information is just useful to be able to get a quick glance in terms of certain variables that is happening um, by lap. But what we're going to do is we're going to switch now and look at how do we use this uh, for vehicle health. So we're actually going to remove um, some of the aspects of this car. So we're going to remove um, the GPS speed. And if I click on this one, it will remove both. We're going to remove longitude and acceleration and latitude and acceleration. Now I know that those are the channels I had open. I'm going to click on OK. So now the channels report is empty. Now I want to be able to add some vehicle health information as well. So I'm going to click add and remove and I'm going to go down to variables which will be useful to understand lap by lap certain aspects of the vehicle from maybe a vehicle health point of view. So I'm going to click on RPM and I want to see the minimum and maximum there. I'm going to scroll down and I also want to be able to see um, battery. Uh, I want to be able to see if there was consistency in battery usage so that I can see if there are any electrical remnants um, in, the, uh, in, in the vehicle. I'm going to look at oil pressure um, and I'm going to look at water temperature and I'm going to click here on those. 
So now I'm going to click on OK. And now the channels report has added all of these new variables to be able to have a look at so I can understand how the vehicle is performing um, throughout each of the laps to see if there are any trends or any information that I may want to be able to address. Now, the most common scenario that is used with the RPM side is to not only be able to look at consistency in the RPMs, but also be able to look for over revs. And so this is an area of report that it often gets used by car owners, by people who rent their cars or by race engineers to be able to get an understanding of uh, certain information that is associated with the RPMs of that particular vehicle. And so uh, any over revs would be very easy to be able to spot very quickly as they show up in this particular data on the particular lap that is there. The next is to be able to have a look at the voltage. Uh, and so interestingly, when you think about voltage and the demands on the car, as you add more electrical uh, components to a car, um, the um, requirements of um, the battery, for example, may change. And, you know, we may see this in scenarios such as uh, if you happen to have a car that you use for sprint racing, where it's got a sprint battery in it. Um, and then all of a sudden you find yourself doing a 24 hour race where there's nighttime and there may be a huge draw from the light setup, and so need to be able to understand maybe what that's happening voltage amongst many other variables, let alone, you know, our other aspects of the electrical setup and the car working well. Then there's the oil pressure and water temp that I've added in here as well as to this model uh, that's available. And you can see additional information here that we've got in terms of uh, what is the variation of, of oil pressure, how consistent is it throughout the um, particular session, um, and um, what's happening with the uh, um, water temperature that is here. Water temp is particularly interesting based upon the heat within the engine and the heat soak and, and does that engine potentially increase um, and, and is it being cooled enough to be able to monitor this. This is very interesting as you look at other variables maybe like um, outdoor temperature or length of session um, as well as we look at these particular variables. So all of this data is available to you to have a quick view and the one thing you can do is you can open it up for as many sessions as you like. So if you clicked on test compare you can have a look at that over periods of time. I've actually got two sessions here that are open to be able to look through this particular variable uh, to be able to see what are the changes and variations that exist in terms of each of these um, components um, as you go through session by session. So it's not unique to one session. You can compare this and that's particularly useful if you're looking at um, different variables on sessions for car health or if you're looking at different variables in terms of driver input um, as, uh, as maybe sessions progress and continue. So that's it for this video. Please give it a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. Please also leave a comment below if you want to let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. There's a lot more content to come. Thanks for watching.